All right, tail of the tape here between these two youngsters. Uh, this one for the WAK1F Pro AM title. Fighting out of the blue corner, Bohdin Winter. Fighting out of the red corner, Alexan Cherkieso. Round one. The bell and round number one is it, you heard Ritz Kuzmenka say it's a five rounder. Uh, two minutes each round. Nice strong right hand there from Winter right out of the gate. You can see a very obvious uh, height differential between these two. Sikasov on paper nine centimeters taller than the Dutchman, but whoa! Look at the hands being thrown by Winter. He is able to generate a tremendous amount of power. This is gonna be an interesting contest here. You're talking about somebody who's got nine centimeters, and so he's gonna, obviously gonna have that huge reach advantage, uh, but Winter, Looks to be the more powerful of the two. He is throwing some heavy, heavy shots in there. Oh, what a, uh, a very powerful, compact right hand that was from Winter. He's getting the ring cut down on him, though, and he got trapped there in the corner momentarily. Serkesov will do that to you. Wow, cracking shot that time. Whoa, and he went for it all with the right hand that time, but nobody was home. Nice body shot there. He hit him with the, with the kick, and there's a knee in return there from the Latvia. Time! End of round one. Second round. All right. Here we go. Cutting down the ring again is Sirkasov in the red gloves from Latvia against the visiting fighter Bodin Winter of Holland. Nice kick there. Bodin is so talented and so powerful. So Kesov though is doing a great job of cutting down the ring. It says when he does finally get his opponent where he wants him, then he's, he needs to be able to take advantage of that and do some damage. Oh, boom. Another good right hand upstairs. And another one, working the body now. Look at that combination here from Winter, who aids a couple of shots in return now from Serkesov. Oh boy, we've got ourselves a fight now, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's like I said, this is pro-AM. Well, it doesn't, the AM, the AM, the amateur part, doesn't even seem to be in effect right here now. I'm, I'm looking at almost like two pros going at it here. Whoa, and he, that was, he didn't even duck. Winter didn't even drop his head at all, and that kick sailed right over his head. That's just how tall Serkesov is. He's 174 centimeters, whereas Bodin just uh, 165. Look how quick he got back in that stance there. Wow, he is really hanging on behind his head right there. Third round. All right, here we go. Third and, I was about to say third and final round, but it's not the final round, it's the third round. The fifth round will be the final round if we need it. Nice body kick there from the Latvian. Boy, he is growing too, like. Sirkesov seems like a lot taller and a lot bigger than he was 
uh, in, in previous fights. I mean, he is only 19, so maybe he's going through a growth spurt or something like that. Lock that kick upstairs. Sikasov trying to get through with the gloves. Well, we walked right into a knee, and uh, Winter caught it, and Sikasov hit the canvas. Kind of right hand that time from the Dutchman, looking for a shot over the top, and again, Sidakasov, both hands behind the head. And why is the referee warning Winter about clinching? He certainly wasn't holding behind the head. It was Sidakasov who was doing so. Whoa! Had an opening there to really drop a bomb, but uh, Sidakasov had his wits about him and could predict what was going to happen and got out of the way. In the blue corner complaining about the clinching too. I can't blame him. Round four. You can hear the referee there laying down the law, no clinching. Nice shot. Look at the way that Sekesov was able to get his reach down now. He's, he's fully extended and that's the point where his opponent cannot hit him, but he can hit his opponent. Winter though, so quick and so powerful. Oh, he walked right into a knee that time. Sekesov drilled him with a knee. He's still throwing hard in there. Though. Very, very hard. Still got that power left, so the knee, even though it hurt, has certainly not had the effect of slowing him down at all. So this kid can take a shot as well as dish one out. Went airborne that time, but not a not anything there to brag about. Looking for a powerful overhand right as well. Well, these two are mixing it up here. I love this. Oh, another knee by Serkesov. Could, could have connected good. Popped him with a left. Now it's Serkesov up against the ropes. 20 seconds remaining here in round number four. These are championship rounds, if you want to call them that. And the title is on the line. It's a Pro-AM title, but it's still a title. Oh, Lord! The best shot of the fight so far from Winter. He just cleaned his clock with that right hand. And another knee. I love the knees. These two have been going at it tooth and nail since round number one with everything that they've got. And they've got one round left to settle the score. Whoa. In the eyes of Serkesov. Good right hand got through there from the Dutchman. Off. Oh, tags him with a low kick, too. Winter's still looking to drop those big bombs, but so far in this fight, he hasn't really been able to connect with a whole lot of them. One or two have got through, and when they did, it was destructive. But he's not landing enough of those big shots. 
There it is, he went for it all again. It's just so hard for him to get close enough. And even when he is close enough, sometimes they're still off the mark. Whoa! Another knee, I love that. I want to watch those knees on replay over and over again. The left knee connected that time. His legs are so long, he's able to connect with those knees. It reminds me of uh, Remy Bonjanski, the flying gentleman. The way he has such long legs, he was able to fly in with those knees so effectively. Oh, and Winter closing the distance now, looking to do some damage, looking to drop the hammer, but he's run out of time. After five rounds, by unanimous judge decision, the winner is... Red Corner, Alexander Cherkesov, Latvia. Tail the tape for our next contest. This one at 84 kilos. We go, we're gonna stick with kickboxing rules. Fighting out of the blue corner. Professional record, four wins, three losses. Muhammad Shusha. Fighting out of the red corner. His professional record, five wins, three losses. Einar Zgobe. Round one. Here we go, touch your gloves. 84 kilos is the weight limit. Whoa. I'll tell you what, from what I've seen and what I know about these guys, they're two nonsense, two no nonsense kind of fighters here. And you can look at the way that Shushan is just bullying his way inside and looking to throw some power. Goldberg's, I have a feeling he may fight fire with fire too. I've seen him really get aggressive from time to time inside the ring, so I'm not, I don't think he'll be backing down, but he's watching very carefully now and studying the approach here of Mohamed Shushan. Shushan actually is almost a little bit out of control here. I think it is, as long as he can reel it back a little bit and not get too out of line, oh my. That right hand, though, is devastating. Oh, and now Goldberg's coming back with something. Tags him with a left hand at the tail end of that combination. Look out. Half the time expired. Boy, did he just narrowly miss with that left hand. Digging downstairs. Well, Shushan, I think he's in danger here of punching himself out. He's, he's putting so much behind all of those shots that if he, it, it's almost like you're putting all your eggs in one basket here. If he doesn't KO Goldbergs, which is still very possible, then uh, he just may, you know, have all the wind taken out of his sails here, and that's when you're really in trouble. Nice shot there in return from the Latvian. Sticks him with a jab. Now he seems like he's calming down a little bit now. Seems like it's all or nothing with this guy. He's either going all out, looking to unleash death and destruction, or he's just kind of hanging out. <laughs> it's one or the other. This guy only knows one direction, and it's 110%. Oh, nice knee and a right hand there by Goldberg. End of round one. Second round. Here we go, round two underway. See if we can get our questions answered.
Still got some power in that right hand, but I noticed that he was breathing real heavy. It seems like he's still packing a powerful punch, though. Come on, come on. Don't let him get back. He's dying, man. Come on. What are you waiting for? Okay, I'll close my hand. Big Mike telling him to get busy in there. Boy, here comes Goldberg, perhaps sensing his. Oh, he just crossed his eyes! Did you see that shot? What a bomb that was! I almost saw the soul of Goldberg's leave his body. Well, now things are really getting interesting in there. I was wondering if Shushan had the stamina or not. But Goldberg's is hurt in there. I mean, he took a heck of a shot and his legs have gone stiff here almost. He is very wobbly in there. Oh, things are really getting interesting now, folks. As we approach the halfway point of round number two, it's anyone's ball game at this point. If Goldberg eats another big shot like this, it's game over, but wait just a minute now. That was a slip over there. Oh boy, Shushan is also exhausted. Oh, he's taking some punishment now against the ropes. He's not responding. And the referee steps in and delivers an eight count. Both guys are ripe for the pickings here. Oh boy, he, he does not have his balance about him. Is, is, is he gonna let this thing go on or not? He's extremely wobbly at this point. This is not time for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation here. He, he can either fight or he can't. What is it? This one is not for the... He's still fighting back, I don't believe it. Where does he get the power from? He looked right over at me that time, he heard me. Oh, and a foot right in the face. The only thing holding him up at that point was the ropes. This is the second time now that the referee has had to interject himself. And that's it, that's the right call. At the second round, after two minutes, 43 seconds by technical knockout, the winner is... Red Corner, Einars Goldbergs, Latvia. the tape here between these two just about every single statistic possible leans in favor of Kvasi fighting out of the blue corner his professional record seven wins six losses Vladimir Hinjo fighting out of the red corner his professional record 36 wins five losses Chico Round one. No touch of gloves there at the beginning. Look, in my opinion, this fight could easily be the main event. That's just how good these guys are. There's the power I'm talking about. Look at those crisp shots. One downstairs, one upstairs. Kvasi, though, in addition to his natural talent, he has got a big reach advantage. Got stuck with another jab there. Look at that clubbing shot, sailed over the head. May have hit him in the top of the dome. Oh man, a powerful body shot that time from the Ukrainian, looking for the liver. Cracking kicks, doubled up on it, did Kvasi. Looking for another one too, but didn't have the distance down. The Ukrainian is not afraid to get inside, and if he's gotta take a shot on the way in or try to avoid one, then so be it. 
He's a brawler and a roughhouser. Fossey's more of a classically Dutch, Dutch style kickboxer. And they don't mind mixing it up either, believe me. Both guys look to be in tremendous shape for this one. Two different body types though. You notice that uh, Hinzu is more of just, he's real thick. Look at how thick he is around the shoulders and the abdomen. Kvasi more of a taller, thinner, lankier kind of a fighter. Kvasi cutting down the ring now. Just throws a good knee inside. Oh my! That shot had bad intentions behind it. And it just fired up Hinzu now. Whoa, what, how on earth was that even possible? That is the most unusual low blow I've ever seen in my life. Just when I think I've seen it all, then I see this. I'd like to see a replay on that. Just, <laughs> just the, Time! All right, Second here we go, round number two. Hinzu still as aggressive as ever. But as, as I was saying, I, I'd like to, I like to see people just go at it. I like to see him just throw all of the, you know, a, any kind of hesitation or anything that they have out the window and just tear into their opponents. Those are the kind of fights I like to see, and that's the kind of fight that Hinzu likes to do. And Kvasi's just going to have to deal with it. See? MMA fight, Hinzu knocked him down, and before the referee could even get over there, he knocked him down again. And then he continued to pummel him after he hit the canvas. That's a lot of punishment. I wouldn't be surprised if the referee takes away a point here. I think he understands now <laughs> what, what the problem is. And, uh, well, Kvasi doesn't care. He just wants to get back in there and keep fighting. Like I said, Hinzu does both stand-up and MMA, so it's, it's probably just like a natural reaction for him. That look, as soon as somebody goes down, you go after him and you try to finish the fight. You can't do that under kickboxing rules. They'll take a point away. You can even be disqualified for something like that. But those are those natural MMA instincts coming into play here. I would also say this too, even though uh, Fasse has been knocked down here, which is a massive, massive plus in favor of uh, Hinzu. Don't count him out just yet. You saw that head kick just narrowly miss. He's still got a couple tricks up his sleeve. Believe me, folks. It's just that power I was talking about of Hinzu. That's his greatest asset in his in his best weapon. He's he's it caught up with Kvase like I like I thought that it had the potential to do. Uh, but Kvase it looks like he, oh boy, he's cut. He's cut right between his eyes, it looks like. Looks like it's in the eyebrow, right in the center of his forehead. And, uh, but he's still in this thing, regardless. Time! Round two. Final round. I think the, the winner of this round is going to win the fight. It, it could be an even uh, contest right now because if if if, if Kvase won the first round, you can get, give it 10-9, but then you give it 
8-10 for his opponent. And so it, it should be even right now if my scoring is correct going into round three. Whoa, Kvase comes rushing in and ended up in the corner. Oh boy, these two are really going at it now. And keep in mind, folks, Kvase is a former welterweight World Grand Prix winner. And so a win here for Hinzu would certainly skyrocket him into the rankings. He's not even actually ranked just yet here in, in KOK. And uh, Kvase is the number one welterweight fighter. Now this fight actually had 81 kilos, uh, but he's the number one ranked welterweight in KOK. And, and the fact is that Konstantin Rusu, who is a still like a paper champion here in KOK and has not fought here in years, not since like, I don't know, 2018 or 19. And so he's, he's not even an option. He's still listed as the champion, but uh, I have a feeling he's not going to fight here ever again. And so Kvase is pretty much the top dog here in the welterweight division. So a, a win for Hinzu would do miracles for, for his career in KOK. Whoa, came charging in with a knee that time. Whoa, and a, a surprise spinning back fist as the blood continues to trickle right down the face, right right down the bridge of the nose and onto the cheek of Chico Kvase. No pun intended. Oh, what a powerful kick that was. Just knocked the taste out of his mouth and into the third row. Oh my! Voss is starting to come alive here now in round three. Cracking low kick there. Every shot he delivers has tremendous impact. It does seem like Hinzu's starting to fade here a little bit and that Kvase is starting to take over. Whoa! Oh my! Die. End of the fight. Kvase raising his hand, marching around the ring here. And Hinzu bent over in his corner. I will announce the decision of each judges. Judge one, Vladimir Hinzu. Judge two, Chico Kwasi. Judge three, draw extra round. Oh, it is an extra round. And that's the right decision, I, I think. Extra round. Well, folks, this one has been brutal so far. But remember, as far as the cards are concerned, whatever happened in the first three rounds, has no impact on the scoring of the fight at this point anymore. It's only the extra round that matters. Hinzu looks like he's a little bit more careful right now. I don't know if that's because of how, how tired he is or if he just you know, doesn't want to make any mistakes here. But I think he needs to go back to what was working for him and that's the power and the aggression. Well, both guys playing it, playing their cards pretty close to the vest here. And the war that we saw in the first three rounds is somehow not materializing anymore. Oh, a knee by Kvasi may have clipped him. Oh, and the kick caught him. And a good low kick as well. I think that uh, Hinzu doesn't have much left here. And if he does, he's not showing it here. That The old Hinzu is gone. Where did he go? It's 
Still a minute 20 left, a long time to go here. And boy, the action is really slowing down here a lot. Nice low kick. Red corner, excuse me, the blue corner calling for action here from their fighter. He's just not responding. That's going to win this round for Kwasi, if, if anything, because there's not a whole lot happening in the ring here, at least not by the standards from uh, the first three rounds. Kwasi is the more active fighter here in this point, is scoring points. Neither guy seems like they can really pull the trigger here. There was such a war earlier on. I think they've both kind of come down from a high of those uh, first three rounds. They didn't expect this extra round. Oh, he's just trying to set him up for the big right hand, but oh, and Hinzu crashes down to the canvas now for the second time here in this extra round. And that's time it. Time of the extra round by unanimous judge decision. The winner is Red Corner Chico Quasi Holland. Co main event on the way, folks. This is Boxing Rules six rounds of three minutes in the heavyweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, 35 years old. Official height 181 centimeter, official weight 93 kilogram. His professional record 15 wins, 3 draws, 14 losses. Representing Belarus, Artyom Chernyakevich. Fighting out of the red corner, 39 years old, official height 190 centimeter, official weight 98 kilogram. His professional record 3 wins, 3 by knockout, lost only one fight. Two times Latvian heavyweight champion, representing Grand Boxing Club Latvia, Igor Vasiliev. Ring referee Igor Sartyomov's boxing rules, four rounds, three minutes each. Box. Round one. Round one underway, and I can tell you this, they love their boxing here in Latvia, a big boxing country. And so, okay, okay, because of the dream boxing brand, more than willing to accommodate them. And a nice stiff left jab there from the Belarusian. Both guys landing some jabs early here. How low Tron Yakevich is getting at times. Just walking right in towards his opponent with his hands up. Taking a shot if he has to. He wants to get inside and do some damage. Uh, Vasiliev does have a height and reach advantage of about nine centimeters. So he's trying to get low, keep his hands up, get inside, and then maybe do some damage. in the red gloves, two-time Latvian champion, been boxing Break. since a very, very young age, which is why I'm, you know, he's 38 years old and started boxing in 95, so a uh, lot of years around the sport, and I'm surprised he doesn't have more professional fights. A lot of guys just, you know, they fight amateur. They're just amateur fighters. Maybe he's just never interested perhaps in 
uh, a professional career. Looks, looks good though in there, the way he's moving around, he's still got a lot of quickness and speed about him. Oh, I like the way he's utilizing those uppercuts. His opponent is so low that you can really generate a lot of power with a shot like that. Last few seconds here, and that is it for the opening round. Second round. Round two underway. Keep in mind, folks, coming up next in the main event, we've got another fighter who is also a boxer, but uh, primarily here now a, a kickboxer in Reynes Porozovs, set to take on Tariq Osare. That is coming up next in the main event, heavyweight kickboxing action here in Riga, Latvia. having to get in between these two again. It seems like uh, uh, Czarnakiewicz doesn't mind getting inside and, and clinching and holding if he has to, because then when the referee breaks them, he's a little bit closer than he would be at arm's length of Vasiliev's. And so that would actually, well, that time he really backed him up. But sometimes when the referee breaks you if, you, if you stay in nice and close, you don't have to close the distance all over again. But then you have to deal with that <laughs> because you are within striking range and you have to put up with that. Overhand right there from the Belarusian. Ooh, and a short little uppercut. Nice left hand around the corner. Running into several shots in a row there. He's got his guard not really com uh, completely protecting his whole face. And Vasiliev's just picking him off at a range with shots right down the middle. seconds remaining here in round number two. There's a pretty good pace here in this fight for two big lumbering heavyweights like this. Tell you what, both these guys are uh, high output, a lot higher than I expected. Time! Round two in the books. Fifth round. All right, round number three here. This is uh, uh, scheduled for six rounds in the heavyweight division. Look at this now, Czarnakiewicz coming right in after him here. Dig. He dug hard with that shot. Break. Starting to open up now. Really putting his power on display here. Stop. If he can get a shot that's perfectly timed and placed right when Czarnakiewicz's uh, 
coming in at him like that, it's going to be bad news. He's got to get his timing just right. He's charging in at him like a bull. Is the big Belarusian, but he's paying for it now. He's really starting to open up here as Vasilevs. Stop! Stop! Oh Stop. boy, he's taking a lot of punishment here, and may have caught a shot on the belt line or a bit lower. Nice doubles up with the left hand. You can really hear these two panting in there. They are breathing very heavy now. Like I said, there's a very high pace here for two big heavyweight guys, and they're starting to feel it now. Just a six-round fight, so they don't have to pace themselves in the, in the same kind of a way as they would in like a, a longer 12-round heavyweight fight. Oh, boy. They're dropping some bombs in there. Stop. Something's got to give here, folks. Something's going to give way. You can just feel it. Break. Plus, you got the other guy hanging all over you all the time. That's going to drain your energy. Stop. Box. Oh boy. Stop. Time! Let's see what happens here in round four. Still keeping it up here. Both guys Stop. have established what their game plan is gonna be. And it's almost like a battle of attrition at this point. Who's gonna force the issue? Who's gonna, which style is gonna overcome the other? I think that Charlie Dikevich here is playing the long game. If he's gonna win this thing, it's gonna be because Vasiliev is gonna run out of gas. Because he can take a lot of punishment here, I'll tell you what. Fighter in the blue gloves here, Artisam Charnikiewicz hey. is tough. He's double tough. He's taken uh, Vasiliev's best shot a number of times and he just keeps coming forward. And so if he can tire this guy out, then he may have a chance of winning this thing down the line. And this is going to be a, at some point, there's going to be a, a fight defining moment here. And Charnakievich is going to push Vasilyevs to his limits and see what he's got. You can only do this so many times. We're just seeing the same things happening over and over and over again. And eventually, something's going to break. Somebody's gonna have enough eventually. But who is it gonna be? Ooh, nice shot there, catching him with those short shots on the inside, those uppercuts landing now, flush from Charnakievich. Oh, a crushing shot that time, a right hand. Caught him in the side of the head. Oh, a nice body shot downstairs too by the Belarusian. Stop. No holding. Box. Break. Caught him. Stop. 10 seconds left here. Box. Time. Oh, 
Oh, wait a minute now. It seems like Chernakievich has taken his gloves off and maybe he's had enough. After four rounds by points, the winner is Red Corner Igor Vasilyev.